That's what we wanted. Sing it with me. That's what we wanted. Just see you go sleep out, jingle and ring, jingle, jingle. Well, I hope we are all inept enough to know what's going on here. I have approximately 12 hours to wrap my entire roommate's room in wrapping paper. Don't worry, none of it is going to go to waste. I'm going to use all of it to wrap my Christmas presents this year. So we need to go scavenge for a cute one. But in order to make that happen, what do we need? Energy and wrapping paper. Oh my gosh, and cute bows. I was thinking of like putting bows on little- So where did we go to obtain all of those things? The most magical place on earth. Target. It's honestly a tradition at this point to get the most unbearable sounding card. Right, so I left my card alone and somebody took it. Oh wow, this is too many options for my brain to handle. All right, I went to go get a second card and there was a little present for me. Oh, how nice. Am I dreaming or are these the biggest bows I've ever seen in my life? Okay, I have to make sure to say that slowly. Um, do you think this is enough? Here you can see all of the supplies gathered at the bottom of the floor. I brought up a stool because I want to reach maximum coverage, not a concussion. And Santa's little helper, who will do nothing but act crazy, be cute, and destroy everything. Yeah! And obviously, to hit the maximum coverage of the playing field, we will be hitting the larger items first, and then smashing into those nooks and crannies when I am probably at rock bottom. First up, we have what I like to call the purple squiggly wiggly. I'm sure you're going to have a very tough time guessing why I call it that. He doesn't really use anything in here, so I wouldn't mind wrapping it all the way around. Yes, the first rip. We've done some slight rearranging, but nothing too extreme. I am worried about this. The goal is to really not break anything. Oh my god. This is supposed to be cute, not an act of vandalism. We might need to do a bit of scooching. Which way would make more sense? Okay, definitely this way. Yeah. The first wrap. Oh wow, that's a lot of coverage. Update, it's so dusty, the tape won't stick. One moment. I don't mess around with dusters in this household. Let's see how it goes now. A lot better. Oh no, the tape. I heard a rip. Unfortunately, the wrap method will not be going down in history. And I didn't think about this before, but we need to be prepping the tape. Not bad. Don't rip, don't rip, please. I don't know if my dead skin cells are helping the adhesion or making it suffer. I guess it's the latter, but I'm gonna gaslight myself into thinking it's helping. This time it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride to go. Yeah! Yes! Why am I celebrating? I have so much left to do. I think the method that's gonna work best is if I roll this out, cut slices, and then apply. This is going significantly more swimmingly than I thought. And here we have it, the world's most wrapped squiggly bookcase that has no books in it. Harry and helped by trying to eat my toes, but mostly proud of that little wiring split. I managed to get it all the way around there. Oh, how darling. The morale is high after that one. Next, we're gonna try and do these boxes under the Squishmallows, which I think will add a very cute aesthetic to his room. Now, the most crucial part about this one is making sure the Squish are where they were. That's gonna be harder than I thought. But not if we do one box at a time. Where are my scissors? On the floor, how safe. I fear this will not be enough. My fears have been validated. Next time we need to make sure we definitely have enough wrapping for the box. Box number one, done. You know, this method is much more foolproof than the last one. You live and you learn, and you have headaches. I have a headache. And we are also killing it on wrapping stuff. We have so much left. We aren't even halfway done with the first roll. And that makes one big happy family and one five five happy Maddie. And next on our list, we have this little glass thing that he keeps under his TV. And I know it doesn't look like it, but this thing weighs like 200 pounds. But be very careful not to hurt the castle. Oh my gosh, is that flam? This is actually cool. We're gonna pull these out in the exact order that they were so we don't forget. <gasps> I have an idea. Perfect. Where's my tape? I have four rolls. Oh my gosh, I get to be a mechanic. This literally ended up being the perfect size. Marvelous. How thick are the sides? <gasps> These scissors are so bad. All right, same methodology on the other side. Oh my goodness. Massive TV understand, complete. And everything is back in its place with full wrapping. The next two tidbits I will be conquering is that and that. I like to call it Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And look how cute Harry it is on the little chair. Do you even know that you exist? I'm thinking for the legs, I'm just gonna do a little peppermint candy cane wrap. Oh my gosh, I don't even need this whole thing. You wanna know what? I think I lied. I think I do need the whole thing. Oh, I think that looks fantastic. So we've got a lot of it done in a very confused raisin. Hey, Raisin Poo, how's it going? Sorry. So it is currently 12.48 a.m. and my girlfriend knows that I'm awake. So she door dashed me some of my favorite things and I'm gonna give you a haul. Some hot Cheetos, some sour gummy bears, gummy worms, sorry. And my favorite flavor of ghost. And then a Red Bull. 
Raisin, do you want some? All right, we have delicately finished the two nightstands and it is time to conquer the bed. This one's turning out to be a little bit more decently challenging than I thought. Just cause this is so soft and squishy. <laughs> I am feeling that caffeine like crazy. How's that looking? Oh, nice! This is turning out better than expected. You think he's gonna be mad? My biggest fear is the cats jumping on this and it ripping. So hopefully they stay a bit dormant downstairs. We haven't even used one roll yet. I don't know why I feel like now is a good time to tell you that I was my middle school mascot. When I was in the seventh grade, I joined student leadership. And I only joined because the girl that I had a crush on was the president. Anyway, when I was away on a track meet, I realized we were the only school to not have a mascot. And so I rallied the troops together and I was like guys we need a mascot and the woman who ran the club was like okay Maddie if you figure out price where you're gonna get it from the whole nine yards yes the stick I'm gonna chase Carter around our halls with this Anyway, so I did that. I did the research and I stumbled across the perfect mascot. It was a tiger. We were the Bengals tiger. And in my head this whole time I'm thinking, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be the mascot because I did all this work for you, girl. No, they had an audition process. I kid you not, I walk in the room, hopes high as can be, thinking nobody else is gonna show up to this game. But do you know who shows up? A girl who does elite gymnastics and a professional dancer. Who's a professional dancer in middle school? We're 12. So it gets to my turn, the woman who runs the club looks at me and goes, Maddie, dance. So I start to do the literal, what is this? I don't know, the let's groove tonight. And they had us all try out with the mascot head on our body. So this massive mascot head was jumbling around my cranium. It smacked me in the nose. I got a bloody nose everywhere. Do you want to know the best part? I got the gig. But every single time I had to suit up in the costume, I had to wear my lacrosse mask so that I wouldn't get bloody noses. Raisin, I'm not even playing, girl. Yes, good, sit. Raisin, go to your coochie cave. Yes! It's time to bust out the penguins for the pillows. These aren't penguins. How did I spend the entire day thinking that snowmen were penguins? Raisin, I don't think your mom's okay. Can I have a hug? Sometimes she listens to me while I'm in therapy. I also told my therapist the other day, the time that I dated a Mormon boy, not gonna lie, he was like a really sweet dude. But here was the twist, all right? First of all, I was trying to convince myself that I was straight. Was I? No, girl, you weren't. But hear me out on this guy, all right? You're gonna be like, wow. Every single morning my senior year of high school, I was a TA for the office before I got fired because I hacked into my mother's email and sent the front office an email saying that I was out sick. Anywho, before that happened, this kid would come in every single day without fail with my favorite coffee in hand. And I'm not even messing around when I say this kid would be there every day. He looked so excited to see me and I was mediocrely excited to see him. And of course, at 17, I was doing everything I possibly could to avoid my work. I wouldn't put it past me to do this just to avoid getting out of what I was supposed to be doing. And he would hang out with me. But then here's where I got led astray. I knew he was Mormon, but that wasn't like out of the blue. Like if I run across a Mormon in LA, it's like running across a troll in Smurfville. Like, and so one day he was like, hey, my church is having a prom. And I was like, they do that? My Catholic church never had a prom. We only had really quiet opera singers for an hour and a half every Sunday. And maybe if we were lucky, we got to color in a picture of Jesus. That's just how it went, girl. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll go to prom with you. I wasn't about to pass up an opportunity that I know my parents would let me leave the house for. So I was pretty ecstatic about more in prom, not gonna lie. But then here's one thing took a turn for the worse. He texted me and he was like, hey, baby girl, here's a dress code. Except he didn't say baby girl. I don't think that word has ever left that man's mouth. And I kid you not, I had never been more clothed in my life. It was literally like girls got to wear dresses down to the wrist and all the way down to the ankles. So I went shopping with my mom at Old Navy because I had nothing of the sort. We stumble upon this burgundy dress that fits all of the calculations. No, 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 don't do that. And so boy picks me up himself the night of Mormon prom because he had a license and he told me I looked beautiful, which gas let me, girl. I support you. And we get there and I'm expecting to go into the dance. No. Boy has other plans. He's thought this night out. I'm just there because he literally said the words, free pizza. I don't even get a slice. And he's like, oh, let's take a walk around the yard. And I was like, girl, I was upset, but at the same time, a slow song came on when he said that. And I looked around at the way that people were dancing and I was like, you know what? Let's go. So we're outside in the midnight air at 7.30 PM. And I'm not gonna lie. We had one of the most engaging conversations I had ever had in my whole life at 17. And I was like, 
like, man, like, bro's kind of deep. This guy's such a good friend. And then I was like, oh, he's not thinking the same thing. Here's what happened. He glides his arm around this church park bench, one of the hottest moves that had ever been pulled on me to date. I'm thinking guy's about to kiss me until I remember he's Mormon. And I actually don't know how that works. But I already knew he was breaking the rules because he was bringing me caffeine, which like, if you're Mormon, I know you're not allowed to drink caffeine, but are you allowed to buy it? Like, is that also a no-no? So I kind of turn away because I was like, okay, at this point, I need to be honest with him. Like, I don't really like him. In fact, this whole time I've been like thinking about how platonically I enjoy his company. Raisin, Raisin, you're popping the bed, girl. Oh no, I knew she was gonna do that. I'm kicking you out, Petunia. So I look a little to the right and he kisses me on the cheek. And I don't really even say anything. And out of nowhere, okay, I guess not out of nowhere, he goes, so am I your boyfriend now? Hold the phone, boy. Is that how quick y'all move? I heard it was fast, but oh my lord. Wait, I didn't even mean it like that. Anyway, we remained friends because I was like, no, that doesn't mean you're my boyfriend. In fact, that was the first time I ever had to pull I see you as a friend card. He was a a really sweet guy he could have taken it worse but we remained friends and later that year we actually had the same sci-fi class together and we almost got detention for passing notes speaking poorly of the appearance of our professor which hear me out the only thing we said that was really bad was that bro kind of looked like the manager from the incredibles you know that little short guy it was like beyond violently uncanny and it was also hard to take him seriously when he was getting mad at us because he read the notes his grumpy face looked exactly like the guy's grumpy face the final touch Ta-da! In no world did I think it was gonna look this good. And now I know. You're thinking to yourself, Maddie, you literally just said that you didn't get detention, but we know that you got detention at some point in high school. You wanna know how I got detention? Or more so, how I got out of detention? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell ya. So as the internet knows, I didn't get a phone until I was 18. Why do you have so many? Girl, oh my gosh, Carter. What is this? Is this necessary? So when I was 14, I did have a phone for two months until my parents found out about my secret love affair. I was just texting a girl and they found out it wasn't an affair and it was a big secret I don't think a single person in my life I told that I was talking to somebody This is the first person I talked to when I figured out I was a little like fruity But also just in general, but I wasn't even discreet about what was going on Like her contact name in my phone was my teacher girl just say like Rebecca or something All it takes is a little innovation to excite you know what I mean And some teachers were really strict about phones and others weren't and my second period teacher was in no way strict about phones but I also happened to forget that she just didn't like me. I think it might have had to do with the fact at that age I was writing extremely depressing poetry and she probably had no idea what to do with me. And so I walk into class on my phone and I had never done that before because I didn't really have anybody to text. Oh my gosh, I'm all bent. And I was trying to be discreet about it. I wasn't being obvious at all. I had my phone like tucked away in my backpack and I would lean over every once in a while. This woman with a grudge against a 15 year old walks up, takes my phone out of my backpack and goes, you can get this from the front office after school. And so I go to retrieve my phone and I'm shaking in my boots. I've never been to the front office before. This was before I worked as a TA. And I go and grab my phone from the front desk lady and she was like, you're gonna have to serve two detentions after school this week, days of your choice. And I was like, oh, how kind of you, days of my choice. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to lie to my parents because there is no way they're about to know that I got detention. For texting in class, just toss me up and tuck me in the air fryer at a cool 375 degrees Fahrenheit because that was not about to happen. And so I told my mom after I got home from school that I had a study group. <laughs> I meant to do that, okay? And so I go to detention. And who, due to all of the luck in the universe, is the guardian of detention that day? Aida. And if you don't know who Aida is, because I guarantee you didn't go to my high school, she was dubbed the woman on the golf cart who will chase you if your shorts are too short, but if you're friends with her, she will not dress code you. Girl, was I wearing short shorts to school? No. So this woman had no possibility of a clue as to who I was, but was also like quizzing people as they walked in the front door. So when it's my turn to tell her what I did to be there, I was like, I was just on my phone in class. She was like, who are you texting? And I was like, a guy. She was like, oh, I see you, girl. You can leave early. And I was like, oh! Just to get more of a grasp on how iconic this woman is, I vividly remember her outfit on this very splendid day for me. She was in a hot magenta zip-up jacket, zebra-striped leggings, and a leopard print Santa hat. It was October, and she kept her word. I sat there and I stared at the wall the entire time, and she let me go. But here's the twist. I had to stay two days, and I didn't know if the deal was the same way on the second day. So day two of detention, I roll in, and she's in yesterday's outfit. Does she have any right to be dressed for people? 
people? No. But was she the most iconic person to work at the school? Absolutely. And so I sit down and she says nothing to me, but do you know what she whips out? A newspaper. So she's sitting there reclined, reading the news, and I'm sitting there bored with no attention span. When 20 minutes into detention, all of us start to hear snoring. Girl had fallen asleep, reading the newspaper in her leopard print Santa hat. So I got up and I left. I guarantee you that woman woke up mad confused or not faced at all. There could have been no in between. Anyway, hope you're still chasing people on that golf cart, Aida. You're a queen. Hey mom, are you proud of me? I'm gonna be honest and a little bit straightforward. It's freaking me out how intricate I'm getting with everything. At the same time, if anybody needs a professional rapper, you know where to find me. On the floor of my roommate's bedroom at 4.40 a.m. About to rap a musical instrument. Also, I've decided I'm not gonna touch the bathroom at all because that's just like gross. If he showers and it gets all steamy, girl, the paper's gonna like melt or something. Also, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the word of the day is girl. Oh my gosh, when I was younger, I wanted to play an instrument so bad, but not just any instrument. Oh, what's that long one? That's not the trombone. Oh wait, maybe it is a trombone because the doo 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 is the trumpet. But my brother ruined it for me. Was it his fault? No. Am I blaming him? Yes. Anyway, my brother decided that he wanted to play the trumpet when he was in the fifth grade. And my parents were like, yeah, go for it. I think they were just excited that he had a hobby that didn't include catching and releasing insects. And so they went to our local music shop and got him a trumpet. It was to this day, the most annoying thing I've ever heard in my life. It's one thing if you're a professional trumpet player and you're like extremely good, but when you're in the fifth freaking grade on your best days, you sound like an elephant buttock. And I would genuinely dread coming home from school and listening to him rehearse. But nevertheless, did I want to do music too? Of course. I wasn't just gonna let him be the only annoying one in the family. But one day he comes home from band practice and he's like, mom, mom, you won't believe what the teacher said to me. And my mom's a teacher, so she was like, I probably can. He was like, I was practicing my song today in band and the teacher called me stupid. Mind you, was my brother the brightest bulb in the box? We're gonna go with no. But is any 10 year old boy also no? And so the next year when they made the announcements that the band was taking on new kids, I was like, mom, I'm gonna try out and play that long one. She said no, because the band teacher was rude to my brother. I don't understand how that was my problem. We have to be extremely gentle. Okay, and it's good. What a glorious accessory time for you. I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't want to do all the shelves because that is going to entail an absurd amount of precision, time, and focus. I only have precision and focus because Alexa, what time is it? 4.56 a.m. Right. And for this one, I'm thinking red for the legs and gray for the bodice. Before proceeding in this endeavor would now be a good time to tell you that I have a bad back. Because when I was 15, my mom decided to sign us up for that Orange Theory Fitness place. Oh my gosh, should I not be name dropping? Anyway, my mom loves a good deal. If you want to know anything about my mom, she gets anything and everything way below average of a price. I don't know how she does it. She's just like a mom, you know? And so one summer, an Orange Theory Fitness opened up around our neighborhood. And so they were like, oh my goodness, first two weeks free. And of course my mom signed her and my dad up. But also part of the deal was like it was a family deal. She could bring me. And I ran cross country, okay? I didn't know the first thing about lifting a weight off the ground. They also had rowing. Do I look like I've ever rowed a boat gently down the stream? Yeah, that's what I thought. And also an important thing to note is around this time I was on Accutane. And for those of you who have ever been on Accutane, you know she comes with side effects. One of them being back pain. And so I spent that entire summer actually working out my whole body, which was a very confusing time for me. And by the end of the summer, when I say I couldn't even bend down to tie my shoes without collapsing onto the floor, I'm not being dramatic. And so that whole time, me and my family were like, dang, Maddie's having pretty bad back pain due to this Accutane. So it's nearing the end of our summer subscription to Orange Theory Fitness. On the second to last day, I go in, start rowing, and all of a sudden, an instructor I've never seen before hops in the room looking like Thor. And I trust him because he was hot. And he comes over to me within the first few minutes of me rowing. He was like, hey girl. And I was like, hey boy. And he was like, hey, has anyone ever told you that you're doing that wrong? No, I literally just come to this class just because my mother buys me a cheeseburger after every time I go. And as I've stated previously, me and free food go no questions asked. And so he goes, yeah, you're just tucking your butt in a little too far. And I was like, why are you looking? He also said, if you've been doing that for long enough, you really should go visit a PT, like a physical therapist. And so after this class, I went and I told my mom, oh girl was pissed. 
this. But like, what was she gonna do? Cancel her subscription? We were like two days before it ended. So nevertheless, the back pain refuses to cease. And then it got to the point where I had serious trouble walking. So my mom finally decided that it was time to take me to a PT. So we go in and I'm throwing a tantrum because I'm like, we don't need to be here. Cause I was at that point in my life where I was like, I feel no pain. So I'm laying in the little laboratory chair. I don't know, what are those called? The one with the giant toilet paper roll attached to it that they whip out every single time a new patient comes in the room. The doctor walks in the room and my mom just goes, my daughter's having back pain. And he was like, stand up for me. He took his hand, gently dragged it down my back, stopped and went here. I was baffled beyond words. Here I am thinking this guy's just gonna be like, here are stretches that will fix it. No, I have a sprained back because you can't heal sprained back. To this day, I have a hard time tying my shoe. This is turning out quite splendid. I need to hurry up though, like it's bad. Okay, will everyone do me a favor and tell me if I missed a spot? We are moving on to the above, which I'm really nervous about because I'm 5'5". Five five. He can reach these because he's 6'2". Let's see how high up my little stool gets me. This should work. The only thing I'm worried about is that. Even on my tippiest of toes, it's still a reach. We are in fact doing red for the shelves. This is not red. Yes, that's what we wanted. Sing it with me, that's what we wanted. That wasn't really a song, but I'm trying my best because Alexa, what time is it? The time is 5.52 a.m. Oh yeah. If I blink really fast, I can see the residue of the ring light and it looks like a bunch of octopus tentacles. Well, that's extremely misfortunate. It was so close to being the accurate measurement too. Let's wrap the first shelf. My arm is already burning. I am terrified of seeing that sunrise. Oh my gosh, cool air is up here. They look so cute. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. Don't fall, please, don't do that. Oh no, it's light outside. I did not think I was gonna be able to pull that off over the bed. Also for anyone wondering, it's daytime. Are you ready for the tour, folks? First, we have the red squiggly bookcase with a shimmering silver bow on top. Then we have Mama, Papa, and Baby Bear boxes and a raisin who's watching me do everything. And then we have a red snowflake shelter for hibernation. For Nemo, that's a pole I wanted to wrap. And then this is in case Carter just wants to play a bit of music and get a little bit of work done. I've spruced the place up a bit. And then we have these shelves, which I'm not even gonna lie, are so iconic. You're welcome, Carter. And then this is just in case he needs to get a proper night slumber. She really likes this freaking stick. Thank you so much for joining me on vlogmas day 10 don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can come back and see carter's reaction tomorrow in the spirit of vlogmas this is maddie and you're watching a mental breakdown boom 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 boom